What's happening, everybody? It's Wednesday, August 5th. I'm going to do a morning Bitcoin and altcoin analysis. I think we'll cover um, <clears throat> things like Link, Ethereum, Tezos, some other altcoins, and maybe some DeFi coins by the end of this video. So let's get down to uh, the Bitcoin analysis, okay? So I wrote a note to my Vantage members and even some free members yesterday, right? So if you guys are interested in the free side of the community, we have uh, the free channels right here. Sometimes we post trades in this channel. Um, and yesterday, no, uh, I wrote a big note mentioning how on this Sunday night um, drop that we have right here, Okay, first of all, we, we pretty much took profits right into that 12,000 area. Uh, most of the Advantage members who are the paying members uh, were not caught by surprise up here because I'd been talking about this being overextended um, and that you know more than likely <clears throat> either we're gonna pause up here um, or it might be just smart to take profit. I definitely did not predict this drop, but the point is that when markets are overextended, uh, traders are over leveraged and directionally biased to one side, uh, this is not uncommon, right? Because when you have too many longs going into the system, too many people with uh, you know, 50, 100x leverage longs, uh, this is how you wipe them out, all right? So there isn't any manipulation about it. It's just a fact, right? Every single <clears throat> position that goes in and out of the market, you have some form of impact on the market meaning someone is watching uh, that there are X amount of longs in the market versus shorts. Um, there is X amount of pressure volume coming into the market, not supporting price at you know, particular levels. Uh, so the smartest of the smart will look for all these clues um, and they will wisely either get out of the market or help pull the rug from under um, to trap people say up here at the top either longing or wipe them out with a big drop like this. So anyway, point is, uh, we mentioned this, took profit up here. And for the most part in this chop area, we've taken one long, which was, uh, I think of the breakout right here, 11,130, and we took profit at 11,400. All this is available in the Advantage Community channels. As you can see in Bitcoin trading, we have Bitcoin leverage long channels. So. If you do trade Bitcoin with leverage or margin on, say, FTX or Binance, Bybit, BitMEX, um, you can follow along in our channels. Alternatively, we also have, you know, scalp positions where we're looking for a couple 50, 100, 200 dollar movements. The leverage long positions, typically we're looking for the broader movements like $300, $500, $1,000 movements. Okay. Altcoin trading, same thing. Right, we have DeFi analysis, regular altcoin analysis, uh, what altcoins were spot buying, um, leverage short, altcoin leverage long. If you want to trade on FTX or Binance, you know, all these different altcoin exchanges. Okay, um, so going back to the analysis, right? So let's dig in. So I was pointing to the advantage members yesterday that we were seeing two trend lines coming down. All right, just like we saw two trend lines coming down right here. Um, I think I've stated that if you've been watching my videos for a while, okay, the one thing that I tell y'all is um, watch for the weekly opens, okay? Watch for the weekly opens and watch for the monthly opens. If price is above the weekly open and it's rejecting price from falling or breaking below, as you can see right here with these wicks right here, wick right here, well, this is a potential area you can long, right? So your risk to reward um, would have effectively been if you were say long, you know, say you bought right when this can no close, well, then your you know, risk to reward would have been from right here. Your stop would have been just below this wick right here. And your target profit would have been $11,400 this area right here which was the key resistance where we previously got rejected. So that's a 2.33 risk to reward ratio. So you would have been golden. I pointed this out to advantage members yesterday. As long as you're above the weekly open, you should be golden, right? Um, the other way you could play this again, which is something that I'm kind of waiting for is, um, I'm thinking that there might be a tap into this area of liquidity right here. And the reason I say that is because 
Well, what we've effectively done is, you know, we drop right there, push back up, drop right there, push back up, drop right there again, push back up, came up all the way here, created that higher low, higher low. Now, it's not necessary that we need to come all the way down here, uh, dig into liquidity and then push up. But I'm saying that's an opportunity and I'd rather wait for that. Alternatively, okay, there's an opportunity where if price closes above this area right here, holds, and starting to push up higher, takes out this key high, well then we can take this trade from, you know, 11,450, all the way probably to about 11,700, maybe 11,745, something along those lines. So those would be the couple, you know, different ways you could play this um, price action. Right now, I'm not really in a BTC long trade at all. Um, the way I'm looking at this is, you know, you could kind of look at this as a triangle. Like, so this triangle right here, right? A, B, C, D, E, and then pushes off. And then within that, we create another A, B, C, D, E, pushes off. So the way you could look at this is, if you're not familiar with triangles, first of all, because it's called a triangle, doesn't mean it has to actually create a triangle. It just means you have to have contracting movement, okay? So we could say, all right, maybe this is part of a one. We might have a two up here, okay? Which would, you know, within that two, you can have an A, B, C, D, E triangle, right? So we could say this was a top, you know, this is your, uh, well, this would be your A, your B, your C, you could make the argument that this was a D, this was an E, and we've actually broken out of that. Or you can even make the argument that this is the D right now. We're waiting for the E, okay? And then we're going to start breaking out of it. So what we're effectively looking for is, the best way to look at this is, all right, um, if you look at this key high right here, so let's dig into that a little bit more, okay? So if I put my marker right there, all right, so the high of that is 11, 11,482, okay? So as long as D does not break above this B marker, this, this could still create a triangle, okay? Meaning the A, B, C, we could be in the D and we could be, you know, uh, pulling back for, for another E. And in that, we could obviously say that maybe, you know, an internal wave count of this could be, one, shoot, let me turn this magnet off. Um, hang on one second. So this could be one, two, three up here. We might be pulling back for the four, somewhere around this E. And then we could be going for that five, which is, you know, that 11, seven area. So either case, as long as we don't exceed this key high, which is 11, what's the exact marker? 11,484.5. Right, as long as we don't exceed that with this current D wave that we're seeing right there, as you can see, we can still create the final E wave that's coming down. And if we're just doing a basic retracement from here to there, we could come down to 11,279, maybe a deeper E wave to the 618 Fib, which is 11,164. So tons of different options out there, you know, for you to look out for. But that's kind of what I'm thinking right now, you know, just to keep the wave counts simple. Um, I think, you know, still waiting for a daily close or even a weekly close of above 11,483.5, which is this marker right here, is probably the wisest thing that you could do. <clears throat> because I think the way I look at price action right now is <clears throat> I see all this as chop, right? This is another thing that I mentioned Sunday is going into the week, um, which after the Sunday drop, I stated that we're probably gonna chop around this range for the rest of the week. I mean, we've done it for a good, you know, three, three and a half days so far, right? We could do it for another day or two. It's very possible. And, and what this chop does is, I think it does a couple things. Um, first of all, this big drop, in my opinion, uh, wipes out a lot of open interest, wipes out a lot of logs. It also maybe removes some money off the market from you know, bigger players who either shorted up here or sold into this rally. So if they sold into that rally or shorted, they are effectively, you know, trying to stay away from this chop or they themselves have created this chop, meaning 
you know, they've probably moved on to something else, which is either altcoins or DeFi coins. And so uh, I think yesterday or day and a half ago, I was uh, telling members that in this chop, it's probably that money has rotated away from BTC and big cap altcoins like Ethereum or Litecoin or Bcash uh, and maybe rotated into smaller caps like say Link or Tezos or the DeFi coins. So those are the ones that you want to be focusing your attention to, okay? So I actually, you know, picked up a small scalp um, link position right here, entry 953, my stop is down here, 921, and I'm targeting right around $10.40 or so. I also have a um, another spot position for a link and my average is like 825. So I'm doing pretty well on that. This is just an alternative trade that like I stated, just in case BTC is going to be chopping around this area, altcoins are the ones that you want to be paying attention to, right? Because Bitcoin hasn't really done anything over the last couple of days, you know? I mean, you're effectively really trading a range right here. Yeah, it could be profitable, but you could also get chopped up. Um, ranges like this are very tough to trade. If you're good at them, kudos to you. Um, but I try to stay away unless I really, really am able to catch just the beginning stages of a breakout, which is the only reason why our community took a trade back here around 11, 130. Um, I think I could show y'all this in the channel. Let me see here. Um, I think this is where, yeah, entry 11, 135. So you can see right here, 11, 135, and we exited right around 11,400. So if you want, you know, this kind of detail and information or when we enter a trade, what's the game plan? What's the entry? What's the stop? Where are we going to take profit? What is our risk? Um, this is the kind of information that we put out. Okay. So if you're interested in that, come join the Advantage community. The link is below. Uh, Discord link is below. And then you can just come join and shoot me a message right here. I'm right here. Okay. Um, so let's go back to altcoins, right? So, so we know what we've decided is, or rather what we've sort of figured out is, you know, most of this is still chop, right? Unless we start breaking out of this key high right here, 11.485, um, we could still be in a, a B, uh, where did I draw my count? Um, that's weird. I thought I drew it. Anyway, I think you guys remember, right? A, B, C. This could be your D, we could still have a pullback for E. So that'd be great, because if you get a pullback for an E, that means you could potentially hop into a long. Now, if you start breaking out above this area, well, then that could also be a long opportunity from here to about, you know, that 11.7 area, okay? Um, link we checked out. I mean, I personally think, you know, if we're just looking at link from the uh, basic standpoint, let me check this out one second. Um, I don't like when uh, trading view doesn't just put things on the time frame that I'm on and just keep them on that time frame. So I gotta then change it up and remove them. So if we're looking at actually, let's dig back into the 15 minute. Okay, so first thing on the 15 minutes that's clear is we have this trend line, okay. After that, you know, we obviously broke below that trend line. And that's probably because, remember, um, Link is a smaller cap altcoin. Ethereum moves with BTC. However, um, Link kind of moves with BTC, but more often than not, when BTC is tr moving sideways or uh, grinding down, uh, Link is actually pushing up. Okay, so I think what happened effectively is link broke down because BTC pushed up. Okay, so now if BTC is coming to say a resistance area and it has a pullback, that means link could fly up a little bit too. Now I think on the daily time frame, I mean I think link makes makes a really good case for um, pushing higher. In my opinion. You know, if you're doing basic fibs on link, right? Fib extensions from here to here, let's make that a little bit more accurate, right? You should be looking for ten dollars and forty cents on link. Okay, that'll be the first target for link. 
The second target would be, you know, 1130 or so, and then obviously 1281 and 13. But I think at the very least in, you know, the near term, say the next few days or a week, I think this one and this one is possible. Okay, so that's kind of why I took the, uh, the long trade that I just told you all about, 953, stop 921. My first target is 1044. Uh, it should be 1040 because I just showed you all that fib, right? The fib is, where's that fib? 1040, right there, 1.618 fib, okay? Let's check out Ethereum. So we've also talked about ETH being a potential leader, right? In that, um, you know, ETH can lead Bitcoin with its movements, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and right now, I don't know if I can definitively say that ETH is uh, ready to push up, but it looks better. You know, it looks good uh, because we have this key resistance right here, 399. We had these um, higher lows being printed. So you can see this was the first low that was printed, higher low, higher low, and we're continuously grinding up. So I think what this could potentially do is maybe create, you know, this kind of ascending triangle structure kind of like that let me pull this down a little bit that's i mean it's not perfect but you know we could actually even draw it somewhat like this okay that could be your structure this is a big triangle looking thing it's not perfect but i'd probably say you know that's what it looks like and so the thing is you know if you're looking at this as a triangle structure like top bottom top bottom another top coming in while well, ascending triangles right in bullish movements already have a tendency to break up. And so if we're just doing a measured move on ETH, well, from here down, okay, say if we have a breakout today, well, we should be looking at ETH at $420 or so. That would be a measured move of this triangle, like right here. Again, the triangle is not perfect. It's, it's actually very, choppy and imperfect but i'm just saying in general if we're doing a measured move the triangle target would be 420 dollars um so again if ETH starts breaking up well then i think link will probably come down you know but btc will go up so then you want to be focusing on bitcoin and ETH trades okay i think for now what i'm seeing in the market right now is possibly maybe another I don't know, half a day, maybe another day of chopping. Because if we have that E-wave coming down over the next several hours, um, you know, that might give a breather to DeFi coins and altcoins like uh, Link to push up. And then once we see that E-wave finishing out, then we can get out of Link and then maybe hop into Bitcoin trade. So all of this is information that I put out to my paying members, which are all the locked channels right here. So, um, you know, if y'all are interested, uh, and joining and making some gains with us. And I mean, you know, here's the thing, right? You could see the gains reviews. Uh, we've been having some really um, great people making some solid gains with us. So you can see right there, we even have uh, uh, equities updates like uh, Microsoft, we were taking a position in uh, Beyond Meat. Uh, we had some spy calls. And then obviously BTC, we're trading altcoins. Um, this is another position. So you can see right here, you know, people are making some um, solid gains and, you know, I think they're pretty happy with the community, right? Um, and we actually had a lot of people join the past several days. So if you all are interested, make sure you join soon before we raise up the prices. All right. Um, let me see. Let's see on the daily. Um, so I think on the daily chart, um, I think the one thing that sort of worries me is after a big drop like this and, you know, volume wiped out, longs wiped out, open interest wiped out. Um, it's, it's usually the grinding behavior like this that kind of scares me because sometimes you see another big move down. So I am aware of that. And that's why I'm not heavily positioning myself in longs just yet. Uh, but I'm not going to be the one to start shorting. Okay, I, I just don't think it's wise to short. I think, you know, you want to effectively buy longs until the idea stops working, right? Uh, but that doesn't mean that you should be aggressively longing. I mean, this is definitely the time to be careful in my opinion, okay? 
So daily, you know, we're still above the pivot. The R1 is way the heck up here around 12.2. So it's possible we, you know, we can make it up there in the next several days. Um, so I will definitely, you know, wait for that uh, breakout above 11.4, hold above 11.4, and maybe we could target 11.7. If we get above 11.7, then we could target that uh, $12,200 target that I just showed you. Okay. Uh, even on the one hour perspective, right, if we throw on the pivots right now, we are above the one hour pivot. So even right now, if you're looking for that pullback for the E, right, what I showed you earlier, you can have your stop either below the pivot or below these wicks. And, um, you know, you could aim for the R1. Again, that's right around 12,175 or so. Right, because the, the notion of using pivots is that if you're holding above the pivot, then you should be aiming for the R1. If you get above the R1, then you should be aiming, you know, for the R2. Okay, but if you break below the pivot, well, then you should be aiming for the S1 way the heck around 99.50. That's what the S1 pivot is. Again, this is on the uh, one hour pivot. The 15 minute things are a little bit different. Right, we're above the 15 minute pivot. And remember, 15 minute is basically a new pivot showing up every single day. So like every new day that starts in the daily candle, these pivots change. So this is for today's pivot, the today's daily candle. And so we're above the R1 on this current um, pivot right here for today's daily. So that means if we stay above it, well then we should be aiming for R2 up here around 11.6, 11.650, all right? Um, so I think that's pretty much it guys. Um, let me see the VWAP. I've told y'all best strategy in VWAP is as long as price is above the v, uh, VWAP, it could stay above the VWAP and hold above the VWAP. Um, you can take longs. If price is below the VWAP and it's rejecting the VWAP, then you don't want to be long. Uh, you could consider even being short, but like I've said, I don't have the guts to short this yet. Um, I don't think it's wise. I think buying pullbacks in the market will work much better for you. Um, so yeah, until then, uh, we'll wait for a good pullback where we'll wait for that finishing E-wave and I'll be trading other altcoins till then. So if y'all wanna know which altcoins we're trading, come join our community. Hit the thumbs up if you enjoy our content and let me know what other altcoins you're trading, okay? I'll catch up with y'all soon, cheers.